Good morning, everybody. Brian Newbert here again from goldenblock.com, live in the old home office. A new week begins. As a new week ended, we think there is a break between weeks, but we're not really sure. Uh, this is your goldenblock.com daily uh, quarantine simulcast for Monday, May 11th. Um, week, whatever this is now, 6, 7, 8, 9, 150. I don't know, uh, but if you're new to the show, we are, of course, doing a little daily uh, conversation every day to put up on video uh, on a variety of platforms, as well as our podcast platform at Golden Black Radio. Hopefully, this has been worth your time. Hopefully, this is helping you pass the time if you have time to pass. Hopefully, this is keeping you engaged. Hopefully, this is reminding you that sports will return uh, sooner or later. And in the meantime, there's enough to talk about to keep ourselves entertained. Uh, This is brought to you, of course, by Fox Purdue Bookstores, Purdue Federal Credit Union, the Sixth Street Dive Restaurant, First Source Bank, East End Grill, and the Charters Team Remax Ability Plus. Want to keep reminding you uh, that if you're looking for a great dinner or to support our local businesses and to support goldenblack.com's longtime friends of the business, please keep in mind the Sixth Street Dive Restaurant in Lafayette, East End Grill in Lafayette, um, Arnie's all over the place, Bruno's in West Lafayette, and the Whitaker Inn in West Lafayette. They're all open for carryout orders and would love to hear from you. Uh, If you're accessing this video on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. You won't be sorry. Don't even know what that means, but it just felt like the right thing to say. Uh, As you know, we've been at this for months now, literally months. Um, Topics are hard to come by. Uh, They just are at this point. Um, But what comes to mind today is that this past weekend was uh, graduation at Purdue. Some graduation it was, um, but it was graduation nonetheless. Friday was the end of the semester. Brings to mind the natural progression of time, the passing of the proverbial torch from one set of students and seniors to a new set of students who are freshmen. Uh, On Friday, Purdue basketball welcomed its freshmen to its Zoom meetings. Um, Jaden Ivey, Ethan Morton, Zach Eady, and walk-ons, um, Carson Barrett and Chase Martin were able to join for the first time, produce team meetings over Zoom. Very exciting, I know. I never in a million years ever would have thought I would be reporting on the day that the freshmen could join a Zoom meeting online as some sort of occasion uh, for their career, but that is exactly what we're doing here. So with the occasion of the seniors leaving and the freshmen coming in, I thought, If we haven't done this already, and we probably have, you're just going to have to live with some repetitiveness here. I figured we would uh, just do a quick little primer on Purdue's freshmen and maybe what to expect from them during this discombobulated, unconventional, ridiculous offseason to come. Not yet known whether or not, uh, best of my knowledge, it's not yet known yet whether or not these, these players can and will arrive at Purdue in June, as would be the norm. Obviously, Purdue is not going to have in-person classes throughout the summer. Uh, Organized team activities are definitely suspended anyway. So even if these guys come to campus as normal, you know, there's really only probably going to be so much that they can do. Uh, Nevertheless, you know, Purdue would like to get them here, would like them to be around their campus, would like them to get acclimated the best they can under these bizarre circumstances. I've said before, I think that the people who, who get hurt m- most by this are going to be the freshmen because the summer is so important from those practices to simply acclimating to college life, figuring out where all your classes are, figuring out where to get your books, you know, learning to live on your own those first couple of months. It's an important time for freshmen, and those guys are going to be behind the eight ball to a certain extent because they're not going to get Uh, the sort of quality lead-in time to their college careers that they would have gotten under normal circumstances. It's especially unfortunate for Purdue because this freshman class is an impact class, uh, potentially. I will run through each of the three freshmen to begin with here, just kind of general expectations. I've seen Jaden Ivey play probably as much as anybody uh, in my business. Uh, I've seen Ethan Morton play enough to know what he's all about. Zach Eady, I have no idea. I've never even laid eyes on the man other than him on the sideline during his official visit, not playing basketball, kind of sitting there. He sits there really well. I can tell you that. That's my only frame of reference on him. I can vouch for the fact he's gigantic. That is my frame of reference on Zach Eady. But the other two, I think I can comment pretty credibly on, uh, starting with Jaden Ivey. 
Uh, I think this kid could be, and I, if you read our site for it, I stopped myself short there, didn't I? Um, if you've been reading our site for any period of time, you know I tend to not anoint anyone uh, before they've played a college game. It's just kind of not something I'm particularly fond of doing uh, because I know everything changes as soon as a kid goes from high school or prep school uh, to college. The transition is not one that is simple. Just because some freshmen have made it look relatively simple over the years does not mean it is simple. It's a special kid who walks right into college and doesn't really absorb any sort of punch to the face in terms of a transition uh, to the next level. That being said, I think Jaden Ivey has star type potential uh, for Purdue. Uh, I think he's he's a really well-rounded, really dynamic uh, sort of scorer. I think he's got versatility to him. I think he's sort of that combo guard nowadays that everybody wants. They can put you can put the ball in his hands. You can let him lead an offense, or you can put him away from the ball and let him move without it and and run offense around him. Just a really really dynamic uh, sort of player who is really fast, is really quick, is really explosive, and has a sixth sense around the basket. When he gets to the rim, he navigates traffic in the lane as well as any guard Purdue has ever signed. He controls his body. He finishes at the basket as well, if not better, than any guard Purdue has signed under Matt Painter. At the basket, I mean. that That is not a dimension Purdue has had very often over the years, and I think it's one Jaden Ivey will give them. He is a, he's a good enough three-point shooter right now. He has a dangerous pull-up. He's really good in ball screen offense. He's got great size to him. He's explosive, again, from a physical perspective. He is right up there, I think, with Carson Edwards, Lewis Jackson, in terms of some guys who've got some real physical gifts to them in terms of his speed in the open floor, his explosiveness, but also the attitude with which he plays offense. He moves really fast. He explodes into things. He's really aggressive. And I think that's exactly what the doctor ordered uh, for Purdue next season because it's something they were missing a little bit uh, this past season. Uh, I think from a defensive perspective, he is going to want to develop there. I think obviously anytime a freshman comes in with some gravity to him offensively, there's going to be a little bit of a transition period learning the system, learning what to do in motion or produce sets, whatever it may be. Uh, so that's going to be the biggest uh, hurdle for him, I think. But he's a pretty driven kid. He's going to work hard. He's going to play hard. And he's going to, um, I think, in time, be a really good player, if not right away. I think he could really, really make Purdue a better team next season. Um, the thing about that is, and I'll, I'll talk about this subtopic later, but Purdue does have guards coming back who are going to be much better next season, I think, than they were this season. So the path isn't as greased as it might have been otherwise for, for some freshmen to step in and be really high-impact players. But that being said, Jaden Ivey and Ethan Morton alike are guys who, if Purdue was in a situation where those two kids had to come in and start right away, you'd feel about as good about that as you ever would under regarding any freshman because I think those guys are both that good and I think they're mature, I think they're driven, and I think they're uh, – you wouldn't really worry about them. The young players are always going to go through some stuff, but I think these guys are wired well to potentially weather some of that stuff. Ethan Morton, moving on to him, I think he is Matt Painter's guy. Uh, to a certain, you know, Jaden Ivey's the same way. Um, Painter locked into him, gave him almost no choice but to come to Purdue. He recruited him so seriously, so hard. He was Matt Painter's guy, but what, when I say Ethan Morton is Matt Painter's guy, I mean I think Matt Painter probably sees a little bit of himself in Ethan Morton because I think Ethan Morton is a really, really high uh, high IQ basketball player, an elite passer, an elite floor general type of guy with some competitive new, competitiveness to him who takes the game really seriously, who thinks basketball, who 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 lives for basketball, to you know uh, to put it one way. And just is going to be one of those guys in the best case scenario who is really an extension of your coaching staff. The guy I kind of compare him to, and this sounds like a ridiculous comparison on the surface, is a P.J. Thompson. Obviously, Ethan Morton is a 6'6 point guard as opposed to the 5'8", 5'9", P.J. Thompson was. But I think they're the same sort of high IQ, high character, substantive uh, sort of point guard, good decision maker, good passer embracer of roles, you know, so on and so forth. Guys who, who, 
who might not necessarily be wired to score, but when the opportunities present themselves, they will make an open shot. They will make the play when it's there to be made. P.J. Thompson made a boatload of big shots in his career for a non-scorer, and I think Ethan Morton projects to be that sort of opportunist in the best-case scenario. I think he's a good shooter, uh, but a guy who's always going to look to pass first, who's always going to live to make other people better, and that is an unbelievable uh, sort of intangible for a team to have in the player who's going to have the ball in his hands quite a bit. Versatility, too. I think you can move him around a little bit. Uh, I think you want the ball in his hands because that's when you put him in the best positions to make everyone else better, uh, to be the sort of decision maker that stood as the reason you really recruited him. But I think in the best case scenario here, you could see a level of trust between coaches and players and player with Ethan Morton that is almost unprecedented. Going back to maybe the Robbie Hummel uh, sorts of guys, Lewis Jackson was that sort of player. Ryan Smith was that sort of player. But I think that um, Ethan Morton is a really high floor uh, sort of player and that players like him, it's really hard to not be good because he's so he's so well wired for what Matt Painter wants in a player. And uh, I just think it's almost a perfect match, if not a perfect match. The thing about Ivy and Morton that I think really sets them up well is that both of them, both of their strengths apply to a very specific, very acute need for Purdue now. Uh, Purdue last season, obviously, you probably noticed they struggled to score at times. <laughs> I think, you know, the lack of, of playmakers in the backcourt at this stage of their career anyway. Some of those guys will grow into this, but at this stage of the guards who played last season's careers, I just don't know if they were ready to go get theirs, uh, so to speak, when Purdue needed somebody to go get theirs all the time. I think Jaden Ivey naturally is that player. Uh, I think he's perfectly designed for what Purdue does offensively, lots of ball screens, whether it's motion, whether it's set, whatever. I think he's going to be really good in that. He's going to be a guy who's going to give them another dimension offensively from a skill set perspective, and he just comes with the sort of take charge mentality that maybe Purdue lacked last season at the offensive end of the floor. Ethan Morton, this was not Matt Painter's best passing team. Perhaps you noticed that also. Uh, the last time Matt Painter had a team that wasn't a great passing team, Dakota Mathias came in, transformed him. I mean, for everything Dakota Mathias brought to produce program, people tend to view him as a shooter and for his defense in time. What, where he really helped Purdue right away was with his passing. He, he really, really was a, a high-impact guy from an offensive lubrication perspective. Uh, and he just was profoundly valuable that way right away. Even though he was sick his freshman year, he was hurt a lot. He wasn't in the best shape because of all that stuff. He really, really helped them uh, with his passing. Ryan Klein comes in the next year, really helps Purdue as a passer too. That is precisely what you're getting in Ethan Morton. That is precisely what Purdue needs at this moment in its history. Both of these guys apply directly like a panacea to what Purdue is lacking uh, right now and really, really jibes with their weaknesses right now, really can help complete Purdue at this point, if not take them to another level. The competition in Purdue's backcourt next year is going to be, is going to be unbelievable. Uh, they are going to be stacked. Eric Hunter is going to be a better player. Isaiah Thompson is going to be a better player. Sasha Stefanovic is going to be a, a better player. Um, Nogel Eastern is poised probably to have a much better senior year than he had a junior year. I tend not to count him as a guard because he plays all over the place. Uh, that's just me, though. Um, the competition is going to be awesome uh, for Purdue in its backcourt. And Jaden Ivey and Ethan Morton, again, are high-impact uh, sorts of guys, potentially. So... Uh, that's going to be a big part of it. Zach Eady, uh, to move beyond the backcourt, Zach Eady obviously is uh, walking into a situation now that has changed a little bit uh, on paper anyway. Uh, you know, I think a lot of us probably looked at him when he signed and said, you know, here's a guy who, who was playing hockey a couple years ago. Uh, he's seven foot three, 250, 260 pounds, whatever it is. Massive, huge, gigantic human being. Um, a little bit different in his body than Isaac Haas. He's not quite the mountain uh, that Isaac Haas is. He's more of a, a straight up and down, but well built. He's not skinny either. Um, but I think a lot of us probably naturally looked at him and said, all right, Purdue's got Trayvon Williams back. Purdue's got Matt Harms back. You've got, you've got Emmanuel Duona coming back too behind them. 
you can take your time with Zach Eady, give him a year to kind of see what you got here, work with him. Now, you know, with Matt Harms having transferred out, there's a, a, a void uh, behind Travion Williams at center. And again, the important part of that is Travion Williams probably isn't going to play 35 minutes a game. Uh, so there, there could be an opportunity there for two young centers uh, to even play. So this is Emmanuel Duona's golden opportunity too right now, uh, but this could also be an earlier than expected opportunity for Zach Eady too. So, but you know, he was playing hockey a couple years ago. He's not played a whole lot of high level basketball quite yet. He played on one of the best high school teams in the country at IMG Academy. He wasn't a frontline guy for them. Um, but he has tasted high level competition. He just hasn't had to carry a team through it yet. Uh, he comes from a college environment, IMG Academy. So they've probably prepared him about as well as any high school ever could. Uh, it's just a matter of experience. It's just a matter of raw basketball ability and how capable of ca how capable he is right away of being able to be a productive college player at a level he hasn't yet really seen. So I think there's there's a certain unknown about Zach Eady, uh, but that unknown could go to could go to known right away because he's going to get an opportunity uh, to really help Purdue this season potentially if he's ready to. We will see when Purdue's going to get that answer. Now I have no idea. Normally that would be a thing you see during the summer. Uh, if there's no summer, then it's going to have to wait till fall. But Zach Eady is no longer uh, no longer should be viewed as that guy who, well, you know, he doesn't have to play this year, so we'll see what you got in year two, three, whatever. Um, he will have every opportunity to come in right away and uh, and contribute. Um, so that's kind of what I got on the freshman class for Purdue, who joined Purdue Zoom calls uh, this week. Just a little editorial note here. Uh, we're going to begin our entrance interviews uh, with these guys here this week. Uh, I should be talking to all of them this week, so we'll have coverage Maybe even Zoom interviews with them. I'm serious. Um, this week. So for a little more coverage on Ethan Morton, Zach Eady, and hopefully Jade and Ivy this week, please stay tuned to goldenblack.com. Once again, this has been your goldenblack.com daily quarantine simulcast brought to you by Fox Purdue Bookstores, Purdue Federal Credit Union, the Sixth Street Dive Restaurant, First Source Bank, East End Grill, and the Charters Team Remax Ability Plus. Reminding you once again, if you're looking for a hell of a dinner, or to support our local businesses, please keep in mind the uh, Sixth Street Dive, East End Grill, but also Arnie's, Bruno's, and the Whitaker Inn in West Lafayette. So uh, I'm sure they'd love to hear from you. Appreciate it, everybody. We'll talk to you tomorrow.